Time again for Talking Dogs with Ian Grant, dog trainer at Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, VFW Drive, Hyde Park. It's the show that deals with the training, socializing behavior, and nutrition of your dog. And brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard. With locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And we're back with the trainer, Ian Grant. And I guess the uh, topic of those four that I just mentioned probably would be behavior today because we're dealing with discipline, which is kind yeah. of a uh, kind of an interesting word. There are many ways you can interpret that, isn't there? There are so many ways to interpret it. I think a lot of times people will interpret it as punishment. I mean, I think that's fair to say, even if we're saying, you know, if we're talking about our kids or our dogs, that they need discipline, most people will think, does you know, seem to have that conception to or miscon or I, maybe I should say misconception to it. It it certainly does. But if I said there's a lot of discipline in martial arts, you would look at it differently. Way differently. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And that's what I'm kind of striving to do with this subject is think of discipline, you know, towards martial arts, think of it the same way towards your dogs. So discipline to our dogs can be structure, routine, rules, boundaries, it, it doesn't need to mean, and it shouldn't mean, I got to hit my dog across the nose for doing something naughty or whacking it with a newspaper and showing it discipline. Like, that's not going to help anybody out. But the structure, the consistency, the rules, really giving your dog a clear picture of what their day should look like and how they fit into your family, that's discipline. Yeah, and it can be confusing too if uh, if you do kind of, uh, you know, as you were saying, a whack them or saw. I mean, they're interpreting like, what did I do wrong? Or how do they interpret it? I guess that's what, how do they interpret that? Well, I think they're going to look at that as probably some sort of aggression, whatever that looks like in their mind, you know, that uh, it was just taken way, way out of context. And that's usually way too much for what the dog's going through. You know, if you think about it, we jump in our car, there is a discipline to driving down the road. There's a speed limit, there's the lane, you know, how we turn, when we turn, all that kind of stuff. Now, you jump on a plane and you fly down to Florida, you jump in a car, it's the same discipline, it's just in a different environment. Right. And I think that's important to remember, too, is that even though you are at home with your dog, taking your dog to a different place, there still has to be a discipline to it. There's, there has to be rules and boundaries. So it's, it's no different there than it is for you know, your home environment as well. Okay, so how do we discipline our dog then? Let's start there. Discipline is incorrect. Yes, correct. I mean, I think, first of all, we're going to use a correction sound of some sort, you know, and it depends on, on what it is. If it's, you know, barking too much or barking at a neighbor walking by, something like that, I'm probably just going to give a correction sound to start with. If my dog doesn't hear me, then I'm going to approach the dog and, you know, make the sound again because I want to put that energy, that vibe out there that I kind of mean business. I don't have to run over to you because now I'm out of control to your dog. Um, but I'm just going to walk over there with a sense of intention. And in this situation, if the dog's barking at a neighbor outside, I'm going to get in between the dog and where it can see outside because I want that dog to look at me. So we always put our back to the stimulation of what's happening. That way we don't need to worry about the stimulation. We are confronting our dog and getting their attention that way. And, you know, that usually gets, gets you somewhere. Whether it starts them moving around or not, it gets you somewhere. It's, it can be difficult to paint a picture of a correction over the radio or you're just hearing sound <laughs> yeah. uh, without seeing the visual along with it. So I, I think we have to be careful with that aspect. But I think using sound and knowing that you're meaning business behind it helps you know create clear communication. Many people get it way out of whack when you hear the no, 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 you know, and they go yeah. right up the scale. And that last no is almost like you know, a scream. Yeah. And then your dog looks at you like, what's the matter? You know, you finally got their attention because your intensity got so high. Or dogs start to listen on the seventh no instead of the fifth no. And they understand that there's a pattern to that too. So it's a, it's a touchy situation, but we don't ever have to, you know, hit our dog or slap them or anything along those lines. Um, if you need to grab a hold of the collar then you need to grab a hold of the collar. But again, it's not to shake or to push or, you know, anything like that. So you're just exasperating the problem if you start getting into the physical part then. Yeah. You, I mean, if you think about it, if they are, let's call it level five of intensity out of 10, and you come in there and you grab a hold of the collar and shake it and try to get your dog's attention and you're at level 10, your dog knows that you are out of control mm -hmm. and you are changing your relationship instantly. Um, especially the next time you go to reach for that collar or the next time you even go to reach and try to pet your dog. You will see that look in their eye where they look at you like, 
uh, what are you? What is your mm. intention here? Instead of, oh, I know this means affection. Yeah, but and of course, and same as with kids too. I guess dog owners, when they get to that level ten, you got to count to ten, or you got to yeah. you got to back off. You know, just kind of okay. I gotta because that's when it really could get uh, you know could get really physical, and that's not good. No, I think we have to look at it from the aspect of if my dog is out of control, what's my energy first? How am I approaching? What is what's going through my brain? How am I ready to act before I go over and approach my dog? So if it takes you. 20 seconds to, to compose yourself and then to be able to go over and address your dog, then then give yourself that 20 seconds. And do it. Yeah. It's yeah. better than waiting two seconds and going over there angry and frustrated. And, right. Because yeah. if, if your energy level is the same as theirs, nothing's going to get accomplished. No, If no. anything, it's going to go the other way. You have to influence them with a calmer energy and, and, right. and show them that you are under control. Right. Let's come back down to earth here and we can manage. You have to be the mature one. Yes, you do. <laughs> in more ways than one. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, back with our question from the doggy bag in just a moment here on Talking Dogs. Back with Talking Dogs with Ian Grant. For more information about Vermont dog boarding and behavior, where he spends a good portion of his time at VFW Drive in Hyde Park, you can uh, you can arrange a visit, or you could also uh, just go to his website, vermontdogtrainer.com, or you could email him, ian, at vtdogbnb. Dot com. So many choices. Yes. All right. The question this morning is, my dog seems to pace around my house a lot. What can I do to help her or him? Well, I, there's a couple of things. First, I want to make sure that everything's okay environmentally, meaning obviously this could be thunderstorms, fireworks. We've covered that kind of stuff in the past. Because sometimes they can detect it before you can. Absolutely. Um, you know, high-pitched noises. I, I, we've got to rule all of that out first before we can, you know, address our dogs. Once we rule all that out, for a dog that paces a lot, I actually want to confine them more, which doesn't seem, you know, to make a lot of sense. People will think, okay, my dog's pacing. I actually probably should just just get out and run. And in some cases it might, but we don't want this dog to practice this mindset over and over and over again because then it can become repetitive. It's a learned behavior and they'll repeat it. So I might try a couple things. I might try tethering this dog to me personally, maybe while I'm sitting down so the dog can't pace, tethering them to something heavy that they can't, you know, dining room table, coffee table, something that it can't move. Um, Or you can always put them in a crate too, just to settle them down. They don't have to be in there for hours. Just see if that settles their brain a little bit and you let them back out once they've calmed down. And that would be kind of my goal is once they calm down from being tethered, then I would cut them loose again. See what the dog does. If it tends to repeat the behavior, I tether again. And then usually, and we actually will see this in our daycare setting. If we have a new dog that comes in that paces a lot, we'll have them on leash. In some cases, we may let them drag the leash around just for the sake of feeling like there's something there. And if they pace, then we might pick it up and just hang on to it for a little while till they settle. Then we drop the leash. You know, they're physically, they've, they're not pacing as much. It slowed them down physically and mentally. So, you know, a couple of little tips like that is probably what I would do to approach a dog like this. But either way, we just, we don't want, it's not a good state of mind for them to be in. To be pacing all the time. Yeah. Unless they're thinking about their next meeting with the uh, the next dog down the street. <laughs> Absolutely. When, when, am I gonna, when are you going to let me out anyway? So if it's that, that's a whole different story. All right. If, if you've got a question for Ian, again, email him, ian at vtdogbnb.com. Or go to vermontdogtrainer.com to find out more. Well, next week we're talking about cooler weather. And, yeah, now that we're into the uh, fall season, it is, uh, yeah, it's time to deal with the weather. And how so are we going to be addressing that next week? Well, cooler weather brings on a change in our dogs. I don't know if you're aware of this, but now that I've uh, seen it, and I actually talked to a couple other trainers this past year about this concept because I'd actually noticed this early on when I first started, but I never really was able to kind of put my finger on it. Uh, So we're just going to kind of talk about how it affects our dogs and what to look for. And how often they want to go out. Yes. That's colder weather. That's in the winter. We'll be talking more about that later, how they don't want to go out. But uh, we'll get into that next week. On Talking Dogs with Ian Grant from Vermont Dog Boarding and Behavior, brought to you by Guy's Farm and Yard with locations in Morrisville, Montpelier, Williston, and St. Albans. And for the trainer, Ian Grant, I'm Roland with the Joy, and we are Talking Dogs.